And then, of course, you won the Glee project then in 2011, which catapulted you then onto a different level of TV fame. And then with Glee, how was that? Like, how was your first day walking onto that set? I would say fairly terrifying. Um, <laughs> I think, yeah, I mean, I think the, the Glee project experience was very different than the Glee experience. It definitely helped, obviously, prepare me yes. for Glee itself. Um, but everybody on the Glee project was on a level playing field because we were all just contestants. You know, the top 12 were from 40,000, and we were all just contestants that were trying to win the show to get on to Glee. Um, but then after winning the Glee project and, and finally getting on Glee, it then didn't feel like a level playing field because obviously I was walking into a set where it was these huge names, you know. I, I started Glee at the beginning of season three, um, which was kind of the height of Glee's notoriety, mm. I would yeah. say. You know, the ratings were really big at the end of season two. They just finished her and they, they sold out the O2 eight nights in a row. They, you know, I was at the Irish gig in Dublin that they sold out. So these people that were part of the cast were huge. Um, so walking onto that set was definitely intimidating. Um, but I settled in very quickly and like got to know them and it was just a great, a, a really great experience. The Irish man on set, I'm sure they were delighted to see you coming in as well. But as you mentioned, like there were some huge stars at that stage. And like rumours have come out since then about Leah Michelle and kind of maybe her mistreatment of other cast members and stuff. What were your dealings? Was it always a, a happy camp when you were a part of it? You know, I think um, I think it's a very it's a very complex sort of situation. You know that that, that you don't expect a lot of people to understand because everybody kind of watching it assumes that yes, these people are very fortunate. They definitely are living the dream, but they also are dealing with things that 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 normal human beings don't necessarily have to deal with. You know, they're they're dealing with Glee itself was an absolutely mental work schedule because not only were you acting in scenes as part of a show, you were also in the studio recording music. You were also in the dance studio learning dance numbers five times a week. So your time was fully taken up. They were also touring in between seasons. So they literally had a week off by the time I got there in the space of like three years. Um, so my own personal experience, and that's the only thing I can really talk to is, is that it was fantastic. Um, is that Leah, you know, a lot, you know, a lot of people kind of kept themselves to themselves, but I don't think there was anything wrong with that because in between takes, they needed their own space and they needed kind of a headspace to like reset and to get ready to kind of do their thing and be on camera. Um, but my own experience, you know, Leah was always really, really nice to me. And I did lunch with her and Corey multiple times, you know, they were seeing each other at the time. Mm. Obviously Corey's passed away since, but, um, but yeah, I mean, as I say, a complex situation. I can see where people are coming from um, with those stories and what they're saying. Um, but I think in order to fully understand it, you know, you kind of you would need to put yourself into those shoes, you know.